Hi, everybody. Let's embark on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Imagine a world where your every gesture, every word, and every action is laced with the purest intention of kindness. Now picture this kindness being your shield and your sword as you navigate the maze of life. It sounds ideal, doesn't it? But let's pause and reflect. Is being excessively nice, always bending over backwards, always the first to step back, actually serving us well? Or is it, in some mysterious way, leading us down a path where our voice loses its strength, our presence loses its impact? You see, there's a delicate dance between kindness and assertiveness, between being nice and commanding respect. It's like walking a tightrope. Lean too much on one side and you lose balance. Now, I'm not here to tell you to abandon kindness. No, kindness is a virtue that makes the fabric of our society richer and more humane. But there's a critical aspect we often overlook, the power of respect, the strength that comes from not just being seen as nice, but also being recognized as someone of substance, someone whose words carry weight, whose decisions are valued, whose presence is acknowledged. Let me share a story with you. There was once a person, let's call them Alex. Alex was the epitome of niceness, always there to lend a hand, never saying no, a truly selfless soul. But over time, Alex began to feel invisible, like a shadow in the lives of others. People came to expect, even take for granted, Alex's unwavering kindness. Alex's voice, once vibrant and full of ideas, became a mere whisper in meetings and gatherings. This is where our journey begins. A journey from the shadows into the light, from being a whisper to being a voice that echoes with respect and presence. As we delve into this voyage, remember it's not about discarding your kindness. It's about enriching it with the power of respect. It's about understanding that respect doesn't diminish kindness. It elevates it. It's about realizing that when you stand up for yourself, when you draw boundaries, when you speak with conviction, you're not being any less kind. And in that self-kindness, you find the strength to be genuinely kind to others. Not out of obligation, but out of a sense of balanced mutual respect. So let's set forth on this path of transformation. It's a path that may challenge your beliefs, push you out of your comfort zone, and ask you to look within with a brave, honest eye. But remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And today, we take that step together. Let's explore how to harmoniously blend being nice with gaining the respect you rightfully deserve, creating a life where kindness and strength coexist, complementing each other beautifully. In our quest to blend niceness with respect, let's first navigate the often overlooked pitfalls of being overly nice. It's like planting a garden. You see, a gardener doesn't just care for the plants with water and sunlight. They also need to be aware of the weeds that can overrun the garden if left unchecked. Similarly, in the garden of our lives, being overly nice can be the weed that, though seemingly harmless, can gradually take over, choking our potential and diminishing our presence. The first pitfall is the loss of personal boundaries. Imagine you're a ship sailing on the vast ocean of life. Boundaries are your compass, your map. They guide you, keep you on course. But when you're overly nice, constantly accommodating others, you toss this compass overboard. Uh. Drift aimlessly at the mercy of others' needs and wants. Your time, your energy, your very sense of self become public property, open for others to use as they please. It's a dangerous precedent setting you up for a journey where you're no longer the captain of your ship. Now think about respect. Respect is like a two-way street. It's given and received. But when you're overly accommodating, always putting others first, you inadvertently direct all traffic one way. People may like you, sure, but liking is fleeting. Respect, however, is enduring. It's built on the foundation of mutual give and take. When you're always giving and never setting terms, you're essentially putting up a sign that says, my needs, my values, my time aren't important. And unfortunately, people tend to take these signs at face value. 
Moreover, being overly nice can lead to a loss of authenticity. There is a saying, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. But when you're overly nice, you're not being yourself. You're playing a role wearing a mask. And what happens when you wear a mask for too long? You forget the face beneath it. Your true thoughts, feelings, and desires get buried under layers of agreeableness. And in this burial, you lose the essence of what makes you Authenticity is the cornerstone of genuine relationships, both personal and professional. Without it, relationships are built on shaky ground, vulnerable to the slightest tremor of conflict or disagreement. Let's not forget the impact on self-esteem and confidence. Continually bending to others will always being the IE's person eats away at your self-esteem. It's like a slow leak in a tire. You might not notice it at first, but gradually the tire deflates and you find yourself stranded on the roadside, unable to move forward. Your opinions start to feel less important, your decisions less confident. You become a spectator in your own life, watching as others take the lead. This erosion of self-esteem is subtle, but its effects are profound. Lastly, consider the impact of being overly nice on your ability to lead and influence. Leadership is about vision, direction, and the courage to make tough decisions. It requires a spine of steel, not a backbone of straw. When you're overly nice, always agreeing, never rocking the boat, you lose the respect that's essential for leadership. People follow those who stand for something, who have clear boundaries and a strong sense of self. They seek leaders who can say, now with as much conviction as they say, yeah. as we journey further, let's delve into the heart of our quest, understanding respect. Respect is like the sun in our lives. It illuminates our path, warms our existence, and gives us the energy to grow. But to bask in its glow, we must first comprehend its true nature. Respect is often mistaken as a mere response to authority or power. But in its purest form, respect is about recognition, recognition of a person's worth, their values, their boundaries, and their uniqueness. It's a silent nod to someone's inherent dignity, irrespective of their status or position. When we talk about gaining respect, it's not about instilling fear or demanding obedience. It's about earning this recognition through our actions, our words, and most importantly, our authenticity. Consider the respect you have for a mountain standing tall, unshaken by the elements. This respect comes not from the mountain demanding it, but from its sheer presence, its unwavering stance. Similarly, when you stand firm in your beliefs, when you are true to your values, and when you honor your commitments, you become like the mountain. You command respect not by force, but through the quiet power of your presence. In the realm of personal and professional relationships, respect is the currency that enriches interactions. It's about listening as much as it's about being heard. It's about valuing others' perspectives, even when they differ from your own. This kind of respect fosters an environment of trust and openness, where ideas can flourish and collaborations can thrive. Remember, a tree doesn't grow tall in isolation. It thrives in an ecosystem that respects its space and contributes to its nourishment. But before seeking respect from others, one must embark on the most crucial journey, gaining self-respect. Self-respect is the seed from which the tree of external respect grows. It's about recognizing your own worth, setting and maintaining your boundaries, and treating yourself with the same kindness and understanding you offer others. When you respect yourself, you set the standard for how others should treat you. It's like setting the rules of the game. We're the main rule. Is I am worthy of respect, and I will not accept less. Building self-respect is not an overnight journey. It requires introspection, a willingness to confront your own weaknesses, and the courage to work on them. It's about taking responsibility for your actions, celebrating your strengths. As you cultivate self-respect, you'll notice a profound change. Your choices become more deliberate. 
your actions more confident, and your voice carries a weight that resonates with others. So as we move forward, let's carry with us this understanding of respect. It's a beacon that guides us towards meaningful interactions, fulfilling relationships, and a profound sense of self-worth. In the next segment of our journey, we will explore practical strategies to gain respect. These are tools and techniques that you can apply in your daily life, transforming the way you interact with the world, and more importantly, the way the world interacts with you. Now, let's turn our attention to the practical strategies, the tangible steps you can take to gain respect. This part of our journey is about transforming understanding into action, theory into practice. It's about equipping yourself with the tools, not just to navigate the world, but to chart a course that others admire and follow. The first and perhaps most crucial strategy is setting clear boundaries. Boundaries are like the walls of a fortress. They protect your values, your time, and your energy. But setting boundaries is more art than science. It's not about building impenetrable walls, but rather about defining your space respectfully and assertively. This means learning to say, ah, oh, when necessary, without fear or guilt. It's about communicating your limits clearly and calmly and standing firm in them, even when challenged. Remember, every time you uphold your boundaries, you send a message, a message that says, I respect myself and I expect the same from you. Next, let's talk about the power of assertive communication. Assertiveness is not aggression. It's the golden mean between passivity and aggression. It's expressing your thoughts, feelings, and needs directly and respectfully to communicate assertively. Practice being clear and concise in your speech. Avoid hedging your words with qualifiers like maybe or I think. Instead, own your words. And speak with confidence, but also with empathy. Understanding that assertiveness is not about overpowering others, but about creating a space where everyone's voice is heard and respected. Another key strategy is developing self-confidence. Confidence is like a muscle. It strengthens with use. Start by focusing on your accomplishments, no matter how small. Celebrate them. Let them be the fuel that powers your self-belief. Engage in activities that challenge you, that push you out of your comfort zone. Every challenge you overcome is a brick added to the foundation of your confidence. And as your confidence grows, so does the respect you command. People are naturally drawn to confidence. It's like a beacon that signals capability, reliability, and strength. In addition to these strategies, it's crucial to cultivate integrity and consistency in your actions. Respect is earned by those who walk their talk, who align their actions with their words. Maybe someone who follows through on commitments, who stands by their principles, even when it's inconvenient or challenging. This consistency in character and action builds trust, and trust is the bedrock of respect. People respect those they can rely on, those who are the same today as they will be tomorrow. Lastly, foster a sense of empathy and understanding your interactions. Respect is a two-way street. To gain it, you must also give it. Show genuine interest in others. Listen to their viewpoints and try to understand their perspectives. Empathy doesn't mean agreeing with everyone. It means acknowledging their humanity, their right to have an opinion, and their inherent worth. When you treat others with empathy and understanding, you create an environment of mutual respect where people feel valued and heard. In essence, gaining respect is about striking a balance, a balance between self-respect and empathy, between assertiveness and understanding. It's about embodying the qualities you seek in others. As we wrap up this part of our journey, remember that these strategies are not just tools for gaining respect. They are stepping stones to a more fulfilling, empowered life. In our next segment, we will explore how to balance being nice with assertiveness, weaving together the threads of kindness and strength 
into a tapestry that is both beautiful and resilient. As we continue on our path, let's explore the intricate dance of balancing niceness with assertiveness. This balance is not just a skill, but an art. The art of harmonizing the softness of kindness with the strength of self-respect. It's about finding that sweet spot where you can be both compassionate and firm, empathetic and assertive. The journey to this balance starts with understanding that niceness and assertiveness are not mutually exclusive. Think of it like a tree. Its roots grounded firmly, yet its branches and leaves sway gently in the breeze. The roots represent your assertiveness, your values, your boundaries, your self-respect. The branches and leaves are your niceness, your empathy, your compassion, your willingness to bend and adapt. To be truly effective, both must coexist in harmony. One of the key aspects of balancing these traits is self-awareness. It requires a deep understanding of your own emotions and triggers. When are you likely to compromise too much? When do you find it hard to stand up for yourself? Reflecting on these questions helps you identify situations where you need to lean more into your assertiveness. Conversely, it also allows you to recognize when a softer, more empathetic approach is needed. It's about knowing when to stand firm and when to yield, much like a wise captain who knows when to set sail and when to drop anchor. Communication is another vital tool in this balance. The way you communicate can bridge the gap between assertiveness and niceness. It's about the language you choose, the tone you adopt, and the body language you exhibit. Assertive communication involves being clear and direct, but also respectful and kind. It's about saying what you mean without being mean. Remember, you can deliver a firm message without losing your temper or your compassion. It's like adding a spoonful of sugar to medicine. Doesn't change the medicine's effectiveness, but it makes it easier to swallow. Empathy plays a crucial role in this balance. It allows you to understand and appreciate others' perspectives, even when asserting your boundaries. Empathy is not about giving in or giving up. It's about creating a connection that fosters mutual understanding and respect. It's about validating others' feelings without invalidating your own. This empathetic approach builds bridges. It shows that you care, not just about the outcome, but about the people involved. Practicing mindfulness and emotional intelligence is also crucial. These skills help you respond, not react. In situations where your niceness is taken for granted or your assertiveness is mistaken for aggression, mindfulness helps you remain calm and focused. It allows you to choose your response rather than being swept away by emotional impulses. This way, your actions are deliberate and aligned with your true intentions. And finally, it's important to cultivate a mindset of growth and flexibility. Balancing niceness with assertiveness is not a one-time achievement. It's a continuous process of learning and adapting. Every interaction is an opportunity to practice this balance, to learn from your successes and your mistakes. It's about growing into a person who can confidently navigate the complexities of human interactions with grace and strength. As we near the end of this part of our journey, remember that the balance between niceness and assertiveness is not just about external interactions. It's about internal harmony. It's about respecting yourself enough to assert your needs and respecting others enough to acknowledge theirs. In the next and final segment of our journey, we will wrap up our learnings and look at how to embrace this journey of transformation, bringing together all the strands of our discussion into a cohesive, empowering whole. As we draw our journey to a close, let's take a moment to reflect on the path we've traversed. We embarked on this voyage with a simple yet profound goal, to find the balance between being nice and gaining respect. It's a journey not just of self-improvement, but of self-discovery, a journey where each step is as important as the destination. 
Embracing this journey means acknowledging that the quest for balance is an ongoing process. It's a path lined with both triumphs and challenges, with lessons learned in each encounter and each reflection. Remember, transformation is not an event. It's a continuous evolution. Each day presents a new opportunity to practice the art of balancing niceness with assertiveness, to refine your approach, and to grow a little more into the person you aspire to be. As you move forward, carry with you the insights and strategies we've discussed. Hold on to the importance of setting boundaries, of being assertive without losing your empathy. Cherish the value of self-respect and the respect for others. Remember the power of your words and actions and the impact they have not just on those around you, but on your perception of yourself. Think of this journey like cultivating a garden. It requires patience, care, and regular attention. There will be days when the weeds seem to grow back, when the balance feels off, but don't be disheartened. Gardening, much like personal growth, is not a task, but a process. It's about nurturing, adjusting, and learning as you go. With each day, your garden will flourish, reflecting the care and thought you've put into it. And as you continue on your path, Remember to celebrate your progress. Each step you take towards balancing niceness with assertiveness is an achievement. Acknowledge your efforts, no matter how small they may seem. These small victories are the milestones that mark your journey, each one a testament to your commitment to growth and self-improvement. In conclusion, the journey to balance, being nice and gaining respect, is not just about changing how others perceive you. It's about changing how you perceive yourself. It's about building a life where you can be kind without being taken for granted, assertive without being harsh. A life where your kindness is a choice, not an obligation, and your assertiveness is a sign of strength, not aggression. So as we part ways on this journey, Take with you not just the lessons learned, but the spirit of discovery and the willingness to grow. Embrace the journey with an open heart and a resilient mind. Remember, the path to balance is not a straight line, but a winding road full of surprises and insights. Walk this road with courage, with confidence, and most importantly, with respect for yourself and others. And in this walk, you will find not just respect, but a profound sense of fulfillment and purpose. Thank you for sharing this journey with me. Go forth and be the architect of your own life, a life that resonates with respect, kindness, and strength.